This is 300 meter grouping. Eight bullets. Fifteen centimeters and uh, height. Five centimeters. Very good grouping, I think. Done by Winchester two seventy. And uh, I am out four zero six four powder. Burns TSX one forty grain copper bullet. We need to use our copper bullet to protect eagles from lead intoxication. I will reload. These shelves with them. This is the resizing tie. This primer remover should be in there like this. And uh, this rod has to go through the neck to push off the primer uh, in it. And uh, the pulling out is kind of difficult because this neck is tightened in the resizing die. Therefore, get in is easy, but get out is tight. This portion, expander portion. Therefore, neck cleaning before using this die is important. I like to use this neck cleaning brush. I like to put a little bit oil to it, just a little bit, is that okay. Clean and oil inside of the neck. Before anything, this is the first process of reloading. I'll make 25 rounds. Oiling the shell is very important before resizing. I always put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiny drips of this RCBS lubrication oil and uh, rub on the pad. This oil thinness is important. Thick oil often deform this shoulder portion 
makes a dent. You know. Oh, this is the seating die. Reforming die has a hole to drain the excessive oil. But in many cases, this hole, I see that? A tiny hole. This hole doesn't work to remove the excessive oil in many cases. Therefore, the oil has to be very thin to make the oil thin enough. I always rub the shirts again by hand. I always like full resizing because partial neck resizing makes the remaining portion a bit thicker and uh, the shell sometimes can't get into the chamber properly, stops uh, in the middle. Therefore, I always like full resizing. To do that, tight enough, okay. This is the position where the base touches the die and this portion moves a bit like this very tight but moves a bit this is the full resizing which i like tight enough again and Okay, the primer is removed and the neck was resized and uh, the neck was expanded again. Okay. This pulling out the rod from in there in the shell is tight, hardest. This resizing is easy, but uh, expansion of the neck again is very tough, as you can see. See that? This is very hard job. Okay, I did it. I like primer pocket cleaning. Using this device. I like devouring the entrance of the neck slightly to seat the bullet very easily. If it is difficult, it sometimes makes the shoulder uh, swell down to swell up the body, which 
results in difficulty to put it in the chamber. So the bullet seating uh, has to be done gently. Therefore, I do this job always. The oil in the primer pocket and uh, in the neck should be removed before seating the primer and the bullet. The primer is weak against oil and uh, the bullet should be seated tightly in the neck. Therefore, I like to do it before mm, the final step. Before putting powder in the air. This does the primer pocket and uh, neck simultaneously clean, oil free. Let's dry a bit. Now we got the cleanest shell, like new. Wind is strong today. This primer setting is the easiest using this tool. Last. I need 46 grains of this powder. So, this measuring rod is set 45.5 grains. Like that just under zero and uh, let's drop the powder granule by granule horizontally it should be absorbed and now in a line. Okay. Let's put it in the shell and put it in the front line. And let's take a empty shell from the back line and uh, Let's measure again. Do the same thing. Just the same. This maneuver is uh, relaxing. 
very relaxing. And entertaining. I like it very much. Like this. We always need to check each case has powder. If not, the primer gas is expected to push out the bullet into the barrel to stop in there. If we fire the next bullet, an explosion will happen. Therefore, this checkup is very very important for the job cool fire tint i like this for sevens prone p2 very much for the job this is the seating die this position this screw should be set to make a coin gap uh, between the base and uh, this one this bar moves to the end without a stress which means there is a gap between the two uh, which means this seating die does not make a roll crimp on its mouth. Roll crimp uh, can make uh, neck swelling sometimes, which makes the uh, putting into the chamber difficult, impossible sometimes. So I don't like roll crimp, so I make a gap between the base and the sitting die. This should be done gently, not to deform the shell shoulder portion. It is very good. And this seating position is higher than setting armor. It is set for my rifle, 1.5 mil before the land touching, before touching the rifling. Just a tiny gap makes this bullet safer. Primer gas is very strong, which will move the bullet a bit. If it was locked by the leveling. This primer gas can make uh, extremely high pressure. It is dangerous. Therefore, this should have a gap. But uh, too large gap makes this uh, round less capable, less capable, less speed. This positioning makes the bread. 100 feet per second higher, in my opinion and experience. Can you listen to the powder shaking sound? I like it. To check, there is powder in there for sure. Okay, the reason why I make 
my hand rolled ammo is to make a round which fits my knees low recoil high power high precision and uh, safety second to save money if I bought this bullet as a product from the US it cost me five dollars around in a copper bread but this hundred armor cost me two drawers around therefore we Japanese deer hunters almost all do hand loading as I do I was taught this method from my friend hunters and a gun shop and I trained myself so thanks for watching see you bye bye